Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking the derivative of a rational function using the quotient rule. So our rational function that we have here is e equaling the derivative with respect to x of e to the 3x all over cosine of x. Now like I say we're using the quotient rule because we have a rational function and what the quotient rule tells us is, sorry, I still need to learn how to spell. Quotient rule. And what that tells us is when I'm asked to take the derivative with respect to x of a rational function, uh, such as this, where I have f of x divided by g of x, what that tells me is I have to take the low and the high function, use them accordingly, where I have the low function, and then I'm going to be multiplying that by the derivative of the upper function here, just like that. Now, because this is a quotient, we're then going to be subtracting. So now I'm going to, because I use this, the lower one first, I'm now using the upper one first in this case, so I'm keeping that the same. Then taking the derivative with respect to x of my lower function here. The next step is then I'm taking the low function, keeping that the same in the denominator. The only difference is now I am taking it and, and squaring it. So when we then apply our original equation where it says to compute. I'm going to take this and use it to our, our rule here. So now I have my lower function was the cosine of x. My upper function is the e to the, th is the exponential expression. So I'm going to have my cosine of x. Then I am taking the derivative with respect to x of e raised to the 3x, subtracting that from e to the 3x, taking the derivative with respect to x of my low function, in this case it's cosine of x, and then I am squaring my lower function cosine of x. So when we go ahead and take the derivative, we want to make sure that we are leaving the, when it has that label, we don't do anything to what's being multiplied by it. So uh, in this case, I'm going to switch these two here. So I'm going to bring the derivative of e to the 3x out in front. So I'm going to have a 3 e to the 3x multiplied by a cosine of x. Then I'm going to be subtracting that from e to the 3x. Then I'm going to be multiplying that by a negative sine of x. And then I'm going to be taking and, and just squaring my denominator, cosine x, to be cosine squared of x. And that is our correct answer for this, for this problem. Excuse me, where yeah. did you get the derivative, the 3 this from the derivative? Talking about this, this 3 here, correct? Yeah. Okay, so how I got that 3 is when I take the derivative of the exponential function. So over here I've got the derivative with respect to x of my exponential value that we see here. And we just get back the same function. Now when we have a number inside being multiplied by that u, sorry let me make that a little more distinct where I am taking the derivative of u not x, sorry about that, and when I'm taking the derivative I'm, I'm basically using here a, a a product rule almost where I'm going to be taking the derivative of the, or sorry, chain rule, where I'm taking the derivative of the inside function here, which is my 
N, N, U, and then that's where that N comes out in front. But then I'm also taking the derivative of the function in s that's outside as well, which is going to be the same function that, that, that we started with. Okay, so normally you, when you do the quotient rule, you would leave it as this in this form. And that's all that this problem asks for. However, we can expand it. So when we go ahead and, and do this, when we expand it, I'm going to bring this up here so we can expand, is I see I have a cosine squared x in the, in the denominator. And what I can do is I can, and because I've got two functions on top being added or subtracted, I can then split the denominator into both terms. So now I have 3 e to the 3x cosine of x all over cosine squared of x subtracted by e to the 3x being multiplied by a minus sine of x all over cosine squared of x. And I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the, the negative 3 because I like to stay very positive. And what I notice here is anytime I take, anytime I have a base squared, I can rewrite this such as this where I've got x squared. I know I'm multiplying two x terms together to get my x squared. So I'm going to apply that same thing here for my cosine because this x, I could have just said it's, it, it's cosine. So when I go ahead and expand this a little further, I get 3 e to the 3x cosine of x all over my cosine of x multiplied by my second cosine of x. And then I'm going to apply that same principle over here where I've got e to the 3x. Now I have a sine, a positive sine of x because remember we distribute the, the negative all over cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x again. When, why, we, why I did this is because I noticed here, hey, I've got a cosine in this first one in the numerator and the denominator and so I can just go ahead and kill those two because that just means it's one. And that makes it a little, little more familiar to me. And the other thing I notice is that I have here a sine over a cosine, which from our trig, trig identities, we see here that anytime I have sine of x over cosine of x, I get a tangent of x. And that makes this problem very familiar and much much more straight straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and r now rewrite this in these using these terms. So now I have a 3 e to the 3x all over cosine of x adding to e to the 3x of now because I have to bring this up to the numerator tangent of x all over cosine of x. The next identity that, that we're going to show is I've got both cosines in, in, the, in the denominator so I can combine both terms so that I then get my 3 e to the 3x plus e to the 3x tangent of x all over cosine of x. The next identity, because I really want to simplify this a little further, so my, my next identity is 1 over cosine is then going to equal secant of x. And because, like we did up here, when I was able to split the cosines squared into both terms, I can then multiply this secant of x into both of these terms like so. So 
I'm then going to get a secant of x, all multiplied by 3e to the 3x plus e to the 3x tangent of x. The next step I can see is I have in both of these terms an e raised to the 3x. I can then pull that out. So then I get as my simplified answer secant of x e to the 3x all multiplied by 3 e to the, sorry, let me, that's a mistake there. We already pulled out that e to the 3x. So 3 plus a tangent of x as our final answer. And this way what we see here is we have a, a simplified version of our original equation. Why do I need to simplify the problem? That's a great question, Raul. The reason why we, si we si simplify in this case f is to make it look cleaner. But what your professors may want you to do is test your trig trigonometric identities and how to manipulate a, a problem to get it into a more simplified form. Great, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.